Yaskawa. <laughs> Welcome to the e-learning module, Sigma 5 Safety. We will start by looking at the safety standard certificate and we won't be going into a lot of detail on the specifics of any of the safety standards but rather what we're going to do is focus on the functionality of the Sigma 5's embedded safety. And so to do that I think the best place is just to look at the circuit diagram and then the logic of how that circuit is to be used. And in addition, we'll explain how the motor stops, and we'll give a couple of examples, as well as other details on the functionality, and we'll answer some frequently asked questions about the safety feature. The Sigma 5 system is certified according to the tests listed here, including the EN 954-1 and IEC 61508-1. And again, we're not going to be going into all the specifics of what each of these standards mean, but we just do want to show here the uh, official certificate and test that was done on the Sigma 5. So here is the basic circuit of the safety feature and a basic explanation of what it does. As it says here, the two inputs must stay connected, otherwise the power is directly removed from the IGBT. What that means is that there are these two inputs, HWBB1 and HWBB2. You can see the pin numbers there. And those must remain connected with the switch that it shows there at the output switch. And if any one of those two inputs is removed, the servo will immediately disable. And so if you look at the internal circuit of the safety function, you can see that there is a direct wiring to the power module of the servo amplifier. This is not a signal that's processed by any CPU. It's completely independent of firmware. It's a hardwired connection basically and that's why they call the signal HWBB, hardwire based block. Now the use of this function is completely optional and if you don't want to use the hardwire base block function, the safety function, then there's this factory installed shorting plug. You can see here, removing that, you need to use a, the lock ejector button and push that down in order to get it out. It's, it's locked in. It's a connector that locks in. So that shorting plug is supplied uh, by the factory. When you open up the amplifier, it'll be already installed. And so by default, the safety option is not used. You could optionally then buy the JZSP CVH03-E plug with cable for wiring the safety relay and getting access to uh, these pins for HWBB1 and HWBB2. Now while the inputs provide the safety turnoff of the amplifier, there is also th available through the same connector the output, the EDM output, stands for external device monitor, and that is to be used to signal your uh, controller or PLC that there has been a safety power off situation just to confirm the status when the servo is in the safety stop mode. And so this EDM output will open up when either of the two inputs is open or basically whenever the servo is in the HBB state, the hardwire base block state, meaning the servo has been turned off using one of the two or both of the hardwire base block inputs. So we know that we need two inputs connected at all times and that if either one of those are lost, the motor will enter this hardwire base block state, the servo will turn off and the EDM output uh, will turn on to indicate back to the controller. But uh, how does the motor stop? And uh, the way that it stops is called uh, several different things according to the different standards. According to EN 954-1, it's a safety category 3. According to EN 60204-1, it's called stop category 0, and according to IEC 61800-5-2, it's called safe torque off. And the way that it stops is it removes the energy from the IGBTs of the servo pack, and the motor stops due to friction and due to the internal dynamic brake resistor. So it is not a controlled deceleration stop. 
And again, one of the key points here is that there are two HWBB inputs, so a failure of one of the inputs does not affect the safety function. And as mentioned before, there's the fault detection and monitoring using the EDM output. Here we have an example that shows the wiring and usage of an Omron safety unit along with the Sigma 5. Up at the top left here, there is a showing a switch to open and close the guard. And when that switch is hit, then the servo is supposed to turn off. And the detail how that works is shown in the flow chart here on the right. It starts with step one, request to open the guard. Step number two, when the motor is operating, output the stop command from the host controller and turn off the servo. Then the guard will open. Then in step four, the HWBB1 and HWBB2 signals are off and therefore the HWBB function operates, meaning it's in hardwire base block mode and you can now you know, operate the guard. And after that you would close the guard and the servo would turn back on. Not automatically, but the, the host controller would have to tell it to turn back on. As far as the wiring, you can see the limit switch here is wired to the Omron safety unit and then this safety unit is wired to the HWBB inputs and to the EDM output. So this is an example of a way to safely enable and disable the servo using a guard system. So how is this any more safe than the previous solutions? The answer is not that it is necessarily more safe, but that it's easier to implement the safety without using external devices. For instance, in many applications, that guard could be something like a light curtain, and the operator may need to trip that guard multiple times per hour or even multiple times per minute while operating the machine. Maybe it's to remove the product or reload the machine frequently. Now without embedded safety, every time this happens, the servo drive main power would have to be removed and this continually will then discharge and charge, discharge, charge the capacitors in the servo drive and that shortens the life of the servo drive since they're not designed to be you know, charged and discharged so uh, frequently. To avoid this, you may need one or even two contactors for safety to be connected between the drive and motor now. But instead of that, the embedded safety function just takes the place of all that wiring, those extra contactors, and makes the system safe and easy to use at the same time. Another advantage to the embedded safety found in the Sigma 5 is the built-in logic for the servo on signal. Now, without embedded safety, if the contactor at the motor makes connection when the amplifier is already sending the servo on signal, the servo will immediately enable as soon as that contact is made. And this is potentially an unsafe operation. External logic would be required in this scenario just to ensure that the amplifier is disabled before allowing the contactor to connect. With Sigma 5, this logic is built in. Now here's another wiring example, this time using a safety block from Phoenix Contact. And this example shows the two e-stop inputs wired directly to the Phoenix safety unit there on the left. Now in this case you see that both of the HWBB inputs are wired to the same pin on the safety block. That's pin 14 of the safety block. And because of the redundancy within the safety block, with the two switches there, redundant operation, and also because of the Sigma 5's embedded safety redundancy for the two inputs, you are allowed to do this method of wiring and you still will be compliant with many of the safety specifications. Now for a frequently asked question. Um, keep these two examples in mind, the Amron and the Phoenix, and you consider then how the safety input can be used to eliminate contactors installed in the system uh, one question that's often asked is, can I use the HWBB input instead of wiring a contactor to the main power? And I'm showing that here in the circuit diagram. This is the standard circuit diagram from even the Sigma 5 manual, same as Sigma 2. And the answer is, it depends. It depends on the result of your safety risk analysis according to the safety specification that your machine needs to comply with. Now, for some machines, the answer to that question may be yes. Maybe you don't need to have the main contactor and still comply with safety. But for many other machines, the answer may be no. You still need to completely remove the main power, at least be able to have the ability to do that. And as I mentioned, this is the wiring that's showed in the manual 
And it's the same as it was for sigma 2. So the contactors that you can reduce would be the safety contactor on the output of the amplifier between amplifier and motor. And maybe in some cases you could also eliminate the contactor to the input power of the amplifier. But again, that's just going to depend on your application and the safety standard that you need. So let me just wrap it up here with a few other details of the safety feature. First, the servo will not automatically energize when the HWBB signals are connected again. You know, they're supposed to be connected, then you turn the servo on. Well, if you lose one of the signals, then you need the servo on input to be turned on again. You need another rising edge from the servo on input and the servo on input stay on in order to energize the servo. That's pretty obvious. You don't want to have the e-stop hit twice and the, the servo power back up again when it hits hit the second time. The second one, the power to the motor is turned off within 20 milliseconds after removal of the HWBB signals. So that is the maximum delay between the time you hit the e-stop or you hit that input signal. You got 20 milliseconds and that's when the motor power certainly will be turned off. The next one, the safety function does not shut off the power to the SGDV amplifier. That's important to know. I think it's evident from the circuit diagram that you're not removing the main power or the control power to the amplifier by using the safety function. So you know, if your safety code requires that the power be removed to the amplifier in certain situations, then you would need to use the contactor on the main input power. All right, the next one down, the motor will rotate when external force is applied to the load. So when the motor is in its HWBB state, the motor still will be able to rotate. Keep that in mind for you know, vertical applications. The load will be free to move. If only the HWBB1 or HWBB2 signal is connected, an A.EB1 alarm will occur unless the other signal is input within 10 seconds. What does that mean? Now normally you're, you're going to have the HWBB1 and HWBB2 signals both connected at all times. Um, now, if you lose one only, you know, that's not a normal situation. You're normally going to lose them both or have them both connected. So if you lose just one of them, within 10 seconds, uh, you'll then get the alarm, AEB1. And that's going to indicate that you have probably a wiring problem or one of the switches is not working or you know, outputs not working on the uh, safety unit that's connected, etc. Okay, now on the other side here, the HWBB1 and HWBB2 signal must be removed longer than 0.5 milliseconds, 500 microseconds. And that's pretty fast, that's pretty quick, 0.5 milliseconds. But any removal of the signal for less than that time would just be taken to be noise on the line, on the input line, and uh, would be ignored. So you've got to have that uh, signal off for at least half a millisecond. The BK signal will turn off when the HWBB function operates. That's the brake output. If you're using a brake motor, we would recommend you use the brake output to control the brake. And uh, the brake signal will obviously continue to function even if you've hit the hardwired base block mode. If the light curtain trips the HWBB input through your safety module, you can expect the brake on a brake motor to also engage the brake. And finally, the HWBB function can be activated during the following utility functions. Uh, these are functions that make the motor run. Function 2, function 3, function 4, function 201, 206, and function 00E. Those are all functions where the motor can move, and if you lose the HWBB input, one or the other or both, it will go into HWBB mode and stop the motor. So, what are the benefits of the embedded safety function in Sigma 5? Let's just have a little review here. As it says, safe stop is reached while main power to drive is not interrupted. You know, why is that so great? Well, faster disconnection, more reliable than the traditional solutions, meaning the contactor solution. Um, no additional contactors are needed, you know, fewer parts, less wiring, less cabinet space. Server drive life is extended, so you don't need to be constantly powering up and down the amplifier and design and installation time is saved by using this embedded safety function. 
This concludes the e-learning module, Sigma 5 Safety. For more information, please contact us using any of these three methods listed, 1-800-YASKAWA, our website, yaskawa.com, or email, training at yaskawa.com. Thank you.